When it comes to data protection in Microsoft 365, many of our security controls break down when we talk about extending access into guest users and external collaboration. In most cases, guests are accessing our documents unauthenticated from devices that we have no idea are secure and actually able to download our sensitive documents locally to their devices. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you the exact policies that you can configure for requiring authenticated access as well as preventing the local download and data exfiltration to their local devices. Before we get started, just a quick introduction. My name is Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP and I've been creating content here in the channel for the better half of a decade. Let's go ahead and dive in so we can see how to configure these policies. Okay guys, so if you've been following along with the channel, you know I've been doing this little mini series on secure device access. We've gone through, if you do allow personal devices, some of the recommended policy sets to limit your attack surface there. And then in the past few weeks, we've been going through managed device access policies here. And if you haven't seen all those, I'll link them in the description so you can get caught up. The one that we're gonna double click on today though is requiring this app enforce restrictions. And I put guests in parentheses here because with all the other policies we're implementing, guest users are something we have to consider to not cause disruption with collaboration and workflows within our environment. If you think about implementing this policy here for requiring a managed and compliant device, Depending on your sharing settings within Microsoft, you could actually just start blocking guest users from being able to access any of the documents that are being shared with them. So it's very important that you take that in consideration depending on the corporation and how they have or are collaborating with external users today. One of the things you'd want to do though is exclude them from this policy. But when we do that, I don't want them to just have unimpeded access to our, our corporate documents, especially since we're not usually going to be managing their device in any capacity. We might have them VPN into a certain network, but it's likely that they're going to be using a device that is their own personal device. And so we want to limit our exposure there, just like what we did with the personal device use in here in this policy. It's the same policy we saw before, but it's basically channeling them into only using the browser and preventing them from downloading our documents locally to the device. In certain regulatory customer environments, it's possible that you're using something like AVD or Cloud PC for that access to contain your eyes, your security even further, but it's going to be a very limited subset of customers that we set that up for and especially in SMB, you know, for, for my audience here that mostly watches my videos. So within here, you know, it's really important that we understand the default sharing settings within SharePoint first to understand how this policy would affect our guest users and guest collaboration. So let's take a look at that in the SharePoint Admin Center. Okay, so within the SharePoint Admin Center, by default in Microsoft, whenever you set up a tenant, the default settings here is that anyone links can be generated which means that by default, anyone sharing a document gets this public link that anyone in the world could access without having to prove their identity. So generally speaking, you know, you wanna change this to new your existing guests because imagine if a sensitive document with sensitive corporate information was actually just shared out that anybody in the world could access. It's pretty scary. Usually when you come into a tenant, you really want to set this to this setting of new and existing guest or by default, you want to change the default link that is created to the specific people. So people have to choose the users and promote a model of least privilege. They could still go into the settings and change it to an anyone link, but they're less likely to do so because it's not the default setting that you've set up here. So we talk about this in a combination with our policies. If you did have this set to anyone and anyone links are being shared, our require a compliant device or the managed device policy is actually not gonna affect any of those users because they're not having to sign in and prove their identity. They're just opening up, like they're opening up a Google search or a web browser page to any site in the world that's publicly accessible. When we change this to this new and existing guest setting though, it's important to note that that would block them if you don't create the proper exclusions in that conditional access policy, which we'll see here in a second. And I also just wanna call out this, this setting is usually pretty disruptive to users because they have to then specify the users that they need to share with. And they also get questions from the users they shared with because they have to authenticate their identity with something like a verification code. I've done previous videos on that that I'll also link in this video description, but it's important to note you usually, before you just swap the setting, wanna have some proper communications and an FAQ for users to reference. 
Now that you have this in place though, the next thing you'd want to do is create that exclusion for your required compliant device or managed device policy within Entra. So let's pivot in there now. So if you recall in the past video, we had this kind of layer one protection policy and layer two protection policy where layer two steps up from just requiring a managed device, which means it's Entra joined or Entra registered into having it enrolled in Intune and enforcing device compliance for additional protections. But regardless of which one you guys are having in place today, you want to go in here to the users section and you want to exclude the guest users from within this policy just so that they are not affected and impacted negatively in preventing collaboration within the organization, which will make the customer pretty angry at you and the end users really frustrated. But again, we do not want them to just then have unimpeded access and create more of a security hole with this external collaboration that might be going on. And so for this reason, we need to turn on this app protection policy. And to do that, actually you originate that policy within the SharePoint Admin Center. So let's pop back over there now and see how we can configure that. So here within the SharePoint Admin Center, we'll go back down to access control and you can click on this unmanaged devices here. What we're doing here is we're saying we're gonna allow limited web app only access for unmanaged devices. And this is something that creates two conditional access policies within our Entra environment. It's really important also to note when you turn this on, the impact that that creates. So let's take a look at those conditional access policies that it generates so we understand what it's going to do in our environment. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video on these policy configurations and want a tool to automate your assessments of these policies across customers, check out a tool I built called Cloud Capsule that you can leverage here. All you need to do is type in a domain name and click on Start Assessment. You'll be asked to consent to some read permissions here for the levels of access we're using to check against the policies across the whole Microsoft ecosystem. And then within just in a few minutes here, you'll start to get all of this data back. This assessment just takes a couple minutes to complete in a tenant, and you can actually get this high level security report that takes a look at a bunch of different data points within the environment. And we can actually go into a mapping of CIS controls and see how compliant our policies are to that standard and actually see the evidence that make up a pass fail value really quickly. In this case, managed devices required for authentication, didn't have any match policies and we're looking for the conditional access policy data set to be able to perform that check. So if this looks interesting, definitely check out cloudcapsule.io and run your free assessment today. Okay, so back in Entra here, you'll notice we have two conditional access policies that are created. I'm just gonna expand this so you can see that there is a timestamp whenever you create that based off the date here. And it's got this bracket of SharePoint Admin Center here that you can see as well too. And it's called block access from apps on unmanaged devices and then use app enforced restrictions. So it's really important to understand what this is actually going to do within your tenant because it's highly restrictive at the end of the day for what you're preventing access into. And this is, again, just scoped into target resource of SharePoint. So it's going to affect document access, not email access and things like that. But that's usually pretty disruptive regardless of collaboration within the tenant. It's got the scope to all users. It also doesn't exclude any users by default. For the conditions here that we have, it's got a client app here of mobile apps and desktop clients for this. So this would still allow for web-based access. We're gonna see the difference here in a second, but it's also saying we need the device to be marked as compliant or we need it to be a hybrid joint device. So it's really important to take that in consideration before you just blindly turn on that setting because it could greatly impact the users within the environment. The other setting that we're using here is this app enforce restrictions for the browser. And so again, we're scoping this to all users. We're not excluding any users. It might be something you need to do. We're going to select in here the SharePoint online resource. And for the conditions, instead of mobile apps, we're using the browser to target that. We're not doing anything in the grant controls. And then we're just using these app enforce restrictions which is really what is gonna create this experience of not allowing the user to download anything locally, which we'll see here in a few minutes with the end user experience. So let's actually take a look at that, starting with being a user within our internal tenant here that has these policies in place and sharing with an external user that maybe is a guest within our organization. So I'm here within a SharePoint site and I'm gonna go ahead and share this out here, this document is Intune Baselines. And I'm gonna specify this is gonna be in Ross at cloudcapsule.io. I'm in the T minus tenant today. I'm gonna to select them here and it gives me this infographic of it's outside your organization. 
by default, I'm gonna allow them to have edit permissions. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just send this. You can copy the link as well too. It doesn't matter which way you share it. I'm just gonna go ahead and share that. Now let's see what the guest user's experience is like actually getting this and accessing it. Okay, so within here, I'm in the user's Outlook environment. We've got that email message that said they've shared the Intune baseline document. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and open that here. This opens up and we're able to see this, but you'll notice that there's this banner here which says your organization doesn't allow you to download, print, or sync using this device. To use these actions, use a device that's joined to a domain for help contact your IT department. So if we had to try to go ahead and say edit, we don't have any capabilities of opening it in the desktop application. And then if you click on file, we don't have our normal um, drawer here as far as being able to click save as or click on um, save as that leads into that download button if you're familiar with that. So this really just restricts us to this web-based access only. And that again is preventing our data exfiltration. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. Next week I'm gonna be doing the last video in this little mini series on securing device access. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you missed last week's video on secure device registration, be sure to check that out as well. I'll see you guys next week.